Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Remember to use the promo code DNVR20 to get 20% off for you first timers. DNVR25 to get 25% off for you second time users of that CBD infused, deliciously rich and potentially life altering Strava Craft Coffee. I'm your host, Drew Creaseman. I'm the managing editor of DNVR Rockies. With me, as always, is beat writer Patrick Lyons. And joining us for some prospect talk here on Prospect Week is the man in charge over at DNVR Avs and one of our favorite people to talk to, AJ Hayfley. What's happening, man? Not much. Just a Friday. Hanging out on one of our few off days. Right. Good thing you've only had to do three podcasts at least today. So. hmm off day yeah three uh, podcasts uh after an, a late night last night and i have an afternoon game tomorrow so you know work work uh, so, work and, and we do want to get in all the prospect stuff but I, i've got to ask you with this as you mentioned all that's going on the abs are on an absolute tear uh, you've got a million things on your plate but Opening day is right around the corner. I know it's been an awful off season for the Rockies, not as bad as it possibly could be. But why? What where happened? are you at? Does I mean what? Yeah, does opening day on a scale of one to ten, or or give me a letter? I don't care. Just how are you feeling uh, about opening day? Uh, I didn't even know it was next Thursday. Somebody had to somebody had to ask or somebody had to tell me because I just didn't know. Um. You know, with everything going on in abs, with the abs playing literally every other day, if not more, um, and pretty much averaging four games a week, I just haven't had a whole lot of time. Um, yeah. I've tried to catch as much of spring training as I'm physically possible, but I just, it's hard to do, man. There's just too much going on around me at this point. Right. I feel the exact same way in reverse. I mean, they've got Rockies have six to seven spring training games going on so it's hard to keep up on the apps so i mean you know what it goes both yeah. ways it goes both ways you know and it's it's, it's funny because things. we're complaining that the abs are playing four times a week and that they only you know that they uh they play every other day for essentially like 12 weeks in a row and you guys are like oh four <laughs> games a week that's cute <laughs> right a little bit slow week for us so just a different world, I guess. Yeah. So we do want to get into some prospect talk here. As we've been uh, mentioning, it has been prospect week here at DNVR Rockies. Been running through uh, the top list, doing breakdowns for all of you that are subscribed to the website. You get all that written content there. Um, but, you know, let's we did a little bit of talk yesterday about the bottom half. So why don't we just start you out with. And other than Zach Veen, I guess unless it's not Zach Veen, who, who, who's just the guy you're most excited about? Let's just start there. Someone you're just excited to talk about in the Rockies farm system. Who's your, who's your dude, if you will, to go back to that show in the Rockies farm system? Um, Honestly, Chris McMahon. Um, like that. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be like my top prospect, of course. Um, I still think that's got to be Rogers, right? He still counts as a prospect, technically. Uh, I mean, anytime something is technically true, it's also technically false. So uh, we didn't include him as a prospect because uh, he is un- is ineligible to win the Rookie of the Year award because, believe it or not, he has over a year of service time accrued. Okay. Well, if he's graduated, then he's graduated. Then I guess that yeah. game would be my top guy. Uh, but the guy that I'm most excited about is Chris McMahon. Chris McMahon. Um, outside of, like, your top guys. Like, every... If, if you're not excited about like the Zach Beans and Ryan Rollison's, like, what are you even doing here? But I like I like McMahon. I really liked him uh, in the draft. He was part of the really good Miami rotation. Um, I'm just curious to see. You know, the 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 Rockies are really really light on arms right now, and especially at the lower levels, it seems like all of their better arms are guys that are getting ready to graduate or have graduated in the last year or two. So I'm I'm excited to see his development in the, in the next couple of year, couple of years. Yeah, he was a part of that you know vaunted uh, pitching class from from last year, and was kind of one of the bigger names um, at the, at the back end of those top players to get. And you know they they passed him up and they went with Drew Romo, but they were still able to scoop him up. And you're right, AJ, is that 
they are a bit light on the the high end uh, starting rotation pieces. I mean, you even talk about a guy like Lucas Gilbreth, who is kind of surprised a bit this spring after only having pitched um, at at High A Lancaster. Um, he's he's come in and he's kind of been a real threat in the bullpen. Um, but as far as starting pitching goes, it's Ryan Rawlson, Chris McMahon, Hell Chris Oliveras, and then you got to hope that you know Sam Weatherly can figure it out, and then Carl Kaufman, who's a, a big unknown second round pick, but ultimately has yet to even pitch. I was going to say, get AJ started on Carl. Kaufman. He was drafted in 2019, and he has yet to to pitch a, a single inning. And and again, there are specific reasons for that, but yeah, Probably it really is just. Us. <laughs> it really is just those those three starting pitching guys that you can kind of start to dream on, and uh, it is a little thin. But you know, the next couple of years here, if the Rockies continue to be really bad, they'll have more opportunities. They're gonna they'll have more bites of the apple and, and kind of start to improve. Uh, because right now, yeah, they're at the they're at the bottom of MLB as far as you know overall team rankings go. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's Jaden Hill season, baby. That's the that's the guy this year. That's been your guy. You've been thumping your yeah, chest for some LSU there, and I mean, does it? So, so since we're you're you're kind of already touching on the 2021 draft, is it's got to be a sore subject? But how do you feel about this idea that you know if they would have the Rockies would have just lost two more games last year, they would have had the fourth overall pick and would have almost guaranteed to have either your dude Jaden Hill, Kumar Rocker. Or Jack Leiter, any of those three guys to bolster out your starting rotation going forward. Does that creep in your mind at all when you think about the 2020 season? Uh, well, I think I think Leiter is probably a one-one guy, so I'm not thinking about that. Uh, and Kumar Rocker hadn't really developed that much since high school. He's really been the same kind of power guy in his college career, so I'm a little less excited about him because it feels like that the the it's not he's not ascending. You're going to use a top five pick on a guy that's not been ascending in his college career. I'm, I'm just not super excited about Rocker the way that other people are. Uh, and Leiter would have been the guy that I would have been really excited about, and I don't think he's going to get to four. So, no, it's not something that I'm thinking too much about. Honestly, um, it, it kind of is what it is. You have to make you have to make the best of the situation that you end up in. Um, the last time I got upset about a team not winning a game for a draft position was in 2015 when Reto Berra had a 41 save shutout of the Winnipeg Jets right at the end of the Avalanche season that cost them the eighth pick, which ended up being uh, Zach Wierenski. So the Avs fell all the way down to 10 and got Miko Rantanen. So that's life sometimes. So the you 2021 know. draft, the Rockies. There you go. Rockies are going to get their own Miko Ranton in there. Yeah. I, good spin. I do like that. And that, that very well could happen. I mean, shoot, you Nolan Arenado, we know, second-round pick. So it's like you could have a pick in the 50s and, you know, have a, a once-in-a-generation franchise-like right. player. Probably right. not, but it certainly could happen. Chris McMahon, 46th pick. Yeah, so. I mean, it's uh, – yeah, it, it's hard to get too attached also to any particular – uh, more than in any of the other drafts, the, the MLB draft can be shaken up between now and, and when it happens. And apparently, according to our coverage last year, the night it happens, we never would have thought. We didn't think. We said adamantly several times that Zach Veen would not still be available. And there he was, and the Rockies picked him up. So you never know. But, yeah, it's uh, uh, more about other people working their mix into or teams falling in love with other players or whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a fascinating world out there, and we'll be sure to, to keep coming back to it, updating yeah. on that. Since we are talking I, about – go ahead, jump in. The, the MLB draft is different, too, because signability is such a huge part of the conversation. Right. It's, it's the only draft where pure talent, like raw talent, is not the deciding factor. Right. You can't just take the dude you want. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, this guy's got signability concerns. He's got this amount of leverage. We've only got X amount of dollars to spend in our rookie pool. You know, it's a different it's a different game. It's a different strategy game. You know, we saw uh, Boston last year use their first round pick on a on a guy like at 17 or whatever, where everybody was like, 
What? <laughs> Nick Yorke. Who? It was, yeah, and then Yorke. sign him for like they gave the, the they gave like a mid first round pick, like a million dollar signing bonus or something, and they used the extra money to sign some guys later on. Right. Uh, so that's it's one of the wrinkles about the baseball draft. I I like and don't like. I like it because it's it just makes the process interesting. I don't like it because, like all things in baseball, it benefits a certain class of team, the rich. Yeah, yeah. But also, it also benefits creative creativity, which which is hard, like you said, with the, with the signability issues, is that it could be this this domino effect. I mean, uh, tomorrow we'll we'll have our write up. Uh, spoiler alert: Zach Veen is in the top two prospects of the Rockies. Weird. What? Um, but, Spoilers. but one thing, you know, not, uh, that I didn't, didn't include in the article was, you know, Veen wasn't the first high school bat off the board, you know, that was I'm Robert Hassel, the third, really so, curious to see how those guys develop next to each other. Sure. And so, so Hassel uh, gets taken eighth, um, very good ball player, very good, but not as good as Zach Veen. And you go, well, why would they do that? And to AJ's point, you know, they, they were able to save some money in the signing bonus. Uh, move that money to the third round to a guy like Cole Wilcox at the University of Georgia, who's a first round guy, essentially, and they they sign him. So they get you know two first rounders out of that by being a bit creative, and then turn around and include Cole Wilcox in the Blake Snell deal. And you go, wow, okay, that's how you play the game of chess. And yeah. so there is that variability, which can be fun, but it's it's fun for individual fans of teams, I think, because again the best players are not coming off the board in the order that maybe they should. And some of the best players are going to college and, you know, baseball needs to kind of keep their stars and, and, and have that pipeline. And I think what they've got now with one baseball, with everything being under the same umbrella, it might be, uh, might be a little bit better. So Ooh. since we're talking about the draft, uh, I did want to ask one of the guys that's probably no, I won't even say one of the guys, the guy who is by far the, biggest range of all the lists that we looked at that some people, I think fan graphs had them all the way up at number three. Some people had them back in the twenties and that was catcher drew Romo, as you talked about just a minute ago, uh, AJ, where are you at on this idea right now? Uh, you know, the night of, I know we were, we were pretty excited. Uh, it doesn't take much to say that somebody could be the best catcher in Rockies history. Obviously you just haven't seen too many high ceiling <laughs> catchers come into the organization at all uh switch hitter with bra power all the fielding metrics but uh obviously just the question mark guys 19 years old long way away high school catchers the history of so so where are you at how you feeling yeah i mean he's a high school catcher man uh yeah. it, like i was really i was really amped on draft night just because it was it's more fun to be excited on draft night than to be pissed so uh i was i was i was into it i was really you know, but the reality, like the reality is he's a high school catcher, man. Right? You just can't, you just can't outside of, outside of his family. Nobody should be overly excited until he actually starts to do something. Uh, you can like a guy's tools and the skill set and all of that, but it, it's, it's a funny thing. And this is another baseball thing where you, you use a high pick and you spend money and you get really hyped on a guy and then you start talking about him and you're like, Wow, this guy has a lot of average tools. Not above average at very many things. A lot of very average skills. And obviously a catcher, like you'll take a lot of that to translate into MLB. Because if you have a lot of average skills, you're probably an above average catcher. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I wouldn't have him in the top 10. Yeah, I think he might have been 10 for us. Uh, yeah, you know the, the the history is not not very good with with high school catchers, um, particularly recently. But you know everything that uh, has kind of been reported on on him and has been scouted, uh, bright kid. And you know, if he goes to college in three years, he's now a college catcher that can switch hit and has above average defensive abilities. Now all of a sudden, that just kind of changes the way we go about you know thinking of of him. Uh, and, and, and thinking about a player just in general because now they're a, a college age guy. And so I think that's that's probably what the Rockies were thinking when they did it. Um, again, not crazy about that. 
uh, as far as what the what the Rockies did with that pick. But I'm gonna give Romo an opportunity, obviously, to do something because um, there's there's plenty to suggest. You know, he he could <laughs> he could be the, the the best catcher in franchise history. I, I think it it wouldn't ask too much. It was just puzzling when you know the organization takes two middle infielders like Dom Nunez and Tony Walters and makes them these really great backstops, and then you you draft a product, you know, with the 35th overall pick, and that's already kind of complete in a sense when you, you didn't need to do that. That was an area of strength for you. But um, I love that he's, you know, he's a switch hitter from both oh, sides. You know, one of that. his – A little bit of a stretch to say catcher is an area of strength for the Colorado Rockies. Well, I mean, I should say the area of strength um, in, in their coaching and their development, the, the fact that yeah. they're able to get something out of nothing. And so if they can get something out of nothing, it, it – makes little sense to try to defy the odds and, and draft a, a high school catcher who's more of a defensive guy. And they're, yeah, I just, they're I just don't think department. you can rely on the formula of turning middle infielders into catchers. It's, it's nice yeah. that it worked for Tony Walters and Dom Nunez. Well, you could draft a guy that just is a catcher and make him a little bit more better. Is, and I think you could still have a Walters and well, that's what Nunez. They, that's what they did. This is a great point. See, high school catchers suck. Just look at Tom Brady. <laughs> he, had to go play, he had to go play a different sport entirely. To be yeah, he had sport. to bail completely. So oh, what a loser! Or, no, it's what I'm. It's what I'm saying. Like, really looking forward to Drew Romo it's, com competing for a different. I get what you're Colorado saying, but this is one of those day. patterns that human beings love to give meaning to. That doesn't. It's everyone's their own person. High school catchers isn't. A oh yeah, he's his own person. But the organization mm -hmm. is is their own yeah, thing with they're just... able to develop. Oh, for sure, sure. No, I'm I'm separate it's from that. that. It's yeah. still yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still instructive to look at history and say, okay, how I'm difficult about... is it to get a high school catcher to get a quality player out of a high school catcher? It's a lot of work, and you're for talking sure. about a serious dice roll with the premier pick, and I mean it's the toughest know. position in baseball to get a quality player at. Anyway, so of course that was going to be the case, right? That fewer of them are going to work out. So yeah, I, feel I, mean, you, I just don't think that that means it's just tough logic. Anytime in anything, I, I'm about this in in any aspect of life, where you just say, well, yeah, there's a category of people, and it doesn't often work out for them. It's like, all right, that's that's definitely worth noting. But at the end of the day, the guy's his own person. It'll work or it won't based on his abilities, not because he was taken out of high school as opposed to college. Yeah, that's not his fault. That's, yeah, what, what right. happens with Drew Romo is, is on Drew yeah. Romo. If we're talking right. about the Rockies and their their pick, it, it was a it was a poor pick. But now that the pick has been made, you say, "All Wait, right, it was Drew a Romo poor pick." Take. The Drew Romo pick was a poor pick. Didn't you like yeah. give it like a B plus A minus the night of the draft? Really, I didn't have any idea. Since I gave it a B B plus. Yeah, we talked about it on oh, the draft pod about the, the odds of of high school uh, selections. I mean, again, he's intrigued. Well, I know we talked be about, about all this before. It'll, I just didn't. Huh, I didn't think that would make it a poor pick at all. I think the fact that they were able to get Chris McMahon, I definitely, uh, you know, helped things out. Uh, I think a little bit for their board. Um, but if they would have been able to take two pitchers um, with the 35th pick, and and when they got McMahon, uh, I think at like 45th or 46th, I mean that would have I think been even better. And I mean that's I guess that's you all develop Max George, you know, like Willie McIver, any of those guys could end up being um, your next. Dom Nunez and Tony Walters. I'm going to write down that you said that. I'm just, I'm just going to say, I'm going to write Clip down that. that you, just, I'm clipping that, that Max George, Willie McIver belief. Uh, if you have a strong belief like Patrick does and those guys, apparently you might want a little bit of insurance for some of those picks. And if you want the absolute best insurance you can possibly get, you got to go to our friends at Gabby. That's G A B I the best possible thing you can do for yourself right now. I'm telling you, it's going to take less than 10 minutes. You go there, gabi.com slash DNVR. You plug in a couple of little bits of information about whatever your home or car insurance is. And then just a few minutes, they'll throw you a bunch of options that you can scroll through, see how much money you're going to save, pick them out. I've only got the car insurance situation going right now. Save me 480 bucks for the upcoming year alone on car insurance. You're probably overpaying. So check them out at gabi.com slash DNVR. AJ, oh, you, you, oh, AJ, you ended up saving the most, I think, out of the three of us. Is that right? 
I don't know. I don't have any idea what you guys saved. I saved like three hundred and forty bucks uh, a year. All right, so uh, you were you were actually below me. I was at three seventy, and so, so the you, the debate is: if you save more money, does that mean you win, or does that mean you've been losing up to this point because you've been paying more? I think it depends on how long you've been paying more right. for. Yeah, yeah right. well, Gabby dot com slash dnvr to win. Totally. That we can agree on. Uh, you can also. It's just one of the many things that you get for being a member of DNVR. Uh, we, we love having you as a member of the family. First of all, there's just that. Isn't that enough? Is that not enough? Just having the warm, loving embrace of all of us here? Okay, fine. Well, we'll give you a free shirt when you sign up for an annual subscription. And oh, also, we'll hook you up with a free Recover Holistic Stick. It's 10 milligrams of CBD focused on recovery. Uh, absolutely fantastic reviews. Check them out at holisticwellness.com. That's H-O-L-I-S-T-I-K wellness.com. They'll also give you a 30% off if you use promo code DNVR30. But again, we'll give you that free one if you want to try it by signing up to become a member today. You get access to all the written content, discounts constantly on hats and shirts and masks, a bigger beer when you come down to the DNVR bar, a free CBD holistic stick. I think I mentioned the shirts. What else is there? Lots of stuff, man. Just become a member. Now's the time to do it. At the DNVR.com. The DNVR. The DNVR.com. Uh, all right. Somebody up here did ask about, since there was a question while the innocent wanting to know about, Michael Toglia. Toglia, mm. Toglia. Toglia, Toglia. Uh, Toglia. Really Toglia. good defensive first baseman. Woo, woo. He's got right. that. He's got well, that AJ here. I'm really, I'm really intrigued with him. Um, you know, hitting from switch hitter. In fact, um, a little bit better from the right side, I believe. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him in, in full season. You know, last year he would have started in low a, which would have been Asheville. Uh, now low a is Fresno. It, it's very complicated, the through line. I think he's probably going to start in, in, in high A at this point just because now he's um, going to be a little old for, I think, for a low A. So uh, I think they could very easily go ahead and, and – I'm not going to say challenge him, but I think you might, might see him in high A in Spokane and what was formerly the Northwest League. I'm, I haven't wrapped my head around in memorizing the new names that they've created for these teams. I think you there's think also going to be easier, sponsorships tied to it. Just yeah, not because we're so used to the old ones, but yeah. But he's got some pop from both both sides of the plate. Um, you know, might be does he? Yeah. Does yeah? He he might. Um, he's not going to be a. I, I don't know that he's going to be a, a superstar per se, uh, but could be a you know a very very good ball player. And I think again that that kind of touches on. So you you got that doubt, AJ. It's that's one of the reasons why the the Rockies are in, in the bottom of, of all thirty MLB teams is because they lack the superstars. <clears throat> They've got yeah. some good guys in the middle like Toglia. But they just – Veen really is their lone superstar with Rollison maybe um, possibly being able to, to scratch at that at least somewhat. But but totally is an important piece that any team is going to need in the middle of their lineup. Yeah, I just worry that a guy that's six foot five and 230 pounds is too much of a contact hitter for my liking. Um, I want to see – I want to see consistent drive, especially from both sides. I want to see him – you know, if he ends up more of a doubles guy than a home run guy, there's no better organization for him to be in, and I can, I'll have no issues with that. Um, but I, I just feel like, especially at a traditional power position, you know, you want to see, you do want to see power from that spot. You know, if, if, if for some reason, you know, whatever's going to happen, but uh, a, a guy like Trevor Story sticks around long term. And you you maybe end up with more power than normal from your shortstop and second baseman because Brendan Rodgers lives up to that hype and that potential. Then you know it, it would be okay if if Toglia doesn't end up you know a twenty five home run guy. But I'm I guess I guess my concern is and and it's it's more that he's like a fifteen home run guy. But I want to see I I, I just want to see how he fills out and actually develops in pro ball. One of, one of the other, I think, concerns with Toglia is, is more of a, an organizational concern. It's, it's first base. 
is you have a lot of guys that are, you know, former maybe middle infielders that became third basemen that are now maybe they're better off of over at first base. And again, we, we're not necessarily sure uh, what the future holds for Josh Fuentes and, and Ryan McMahon, but uh, El Harris Montero is a third baseman that might be better suited for first base. Colton Welker, same thing. Some mobility um, questions about him. Maybe he's better suited for first base. Ryan Vallade is, is average defensively out in left field. There's been some discussion. Maybe he moves over to first base. So it's funny. You have, you have this guy who's above average defensively at first base in Toglia, and you go, we may actually need to move you to the outfield because we've got a lot of first base guys <laughs> yeah. at this point. And Grant Levine, which I yeah. didn't even mention uh, from the 2018 draft. So uh, it is kind of interesting and, and maybe unfortunate for him that, you know, his fate might be uh, more aligned to what the other guys in the organization do um, versus, you know, his own as far as position goes. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the power's there. Uh, I, I get AJ's concern, but uh, I was just double checking a couple of things to make sure I wasn't totally bananas. Yeah, Fangraph slapped a raw power 55 score on him. So, you know, that's not elite by any means, but that's that's very, very solid, especially when you're making the kind of contact that he's going to be making. That's yeah. still, um, that's quality. Now it's not playing up to that level. Again, one of the guys probably most hurt by not having any minor league season Last year, the year before that, 2019, nine home runs and 176 plate appearances in low A ball. His first appearance in uh, pro ball doesn't go to rookie or short season or any of that stuff. Goes straight to low A, nine yackers in, in just 41 games. Uh, you know, it's it, – yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what he can do. We, we just got to learn more about him. It, it's one of those guys who, if he had had a big second year – I think we we could be talking about as more of a star potential guy. And if it had gone the other way, then we're still going, oh, okay, well, shoot. Yeah, he's got all these problems. And we just we just don't know. But uh he, I feel he's good about his trajectory. In. Yeah. You know, like, like I just, feel I feel good that he's he's on his way. I I really, really like Patrick's point that the organization is all of a sudden flush with guys that they might have to move there. And he might be a, a victim of his own success defensively where they decide to put him in, in the outfield. In the outfield. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be really interesting. The other thing to remember too, is that uh, the DH is probably coming to the national league yeah. near you. And, and that's something worth keeping in mind for any of these guys as well. Yeah. That could be key. That, that could be Colt Mulker's best position. Dude can hit. The dude can hit. The the dude can hit. Welker can hit. Dude. It's going to be Grant Levine's best position. You don't have to worry about it. Just let him, just let him hit home runs. And right. you know what? I mean, like that's such a game changer for any NL organization is those players that in the <clears> past, <throat> if you had those questions, you might not even draft those guys. Or yeah. if you're in trade negotiations, right. you go, I can't accept that guy back. I need somebody else that maybe is a little bit less. Um, and so that opens Excuse me. That opens up so many doors for the organization, you know, to be able to do that. And and you know, to go back to to the one thing that we've kind of touched on here and there is this idea that there's so much uncertainty, not just with Rockies prospects. I think maybe a little bit more uh, than than some other teams, but on the spectrum, they're all really close together. There was no 2020 minor league season. Like that's it. Right. Right. And I think because most of the best Rockies prospects have come in the last three drafts, 2018, 19, and 20 they're, you know, they're just, they're just at a loss and, and there's so much that's not known. And with, right. you know, an okay year, um, they're still going to be around the same spot. They'll add a, a the, the eighth overall pick. So they'll be a little bit better. And if some of the guys uh, end up exceeding some of the projections, then, you know, next year you might see them, you know, 20th, let's say, and then you go, all right, that's not at the bottom, still not great, but they're improving. They're, they're taking those steps forward. Now, and depending the, on what they get for Trevor Story, too. And and that. And even seeing a lot of these names from the Nolan trade, you know, in this list, while you'd like these guys to be higher, you do kind of see, okay, well, these guys can be factors. It's a thing or whatever. Uh, but t while we're talking about risers, you know, guys who have really risen up the system, and as we talked about, there hasn't been anybody who's had the chance to do that in the last year. How would you even? Uh, but somebody who had kind of right before that, the, I think the guy who was on the biggest uh, – streak rise ahead of that and and especially scouts and evaluators real high 
Adam asking about him on the comments on Aaron Shunk. Uh, I always forget where, he exists. Where, where are you at on the – see, I did too, like because he just hadn't been for his first couple of years in the system. Like we're talking about, he had been more in that – Toglia kind of maybe he's a thing, maybe he's not a thing. And now people are looking at Shunk and going, well, well this guy looks like he could be a thing, man. To to be honest, when they draft a third baseman and I'm looking at Nolan and he just signs a huge contract and I'm just kind of like, okay, well, you know, maybe, like, maybe this is, you know, it's just, it's just a guy that I kind of, it was sort of out of sight, out of mind, thinking that there was going to be a guy in that spot for the Rockies for the next, you know, 10 years or so. Um, now that that's changed, it's kind of readjusted a spotlight on that position again. Uh, we're even, I mean, we're seeing McMahon, right? Came up originally as a third baseman. And now it's like, okay, is he going to transition back over there as they've been trying to find a place for him to work, uh, just to get the bat in the lineup. And now it's like, okay, well now, now you reevaluate that position with a fresh set of eyes and, you know, Shunk is a guy that he's been productive. He's he's been on a, an, an, an encouraging trajectory as much as one can be given no minor league baseball for a year. Um, I it's he seems like kind of a, the master of none, jack of all trades. Like can can help you with a little bit of everything, but there isn't going to be anything that stands out about him. Um. And those guys are always, I think those are the toughest evaluations because there's no true strength or weakness. But as they continue to mature over time, if everything just gets a little bit better, if it gets 2% better every year, he spends 5% or five years in the minors, the guy gets 10% better at everything, becomes a really good pro player. You know, just all of a sudden you're like, well, you didn't really see this coming. He wasn't an all-star at any of these levels. He doesn't have that hype about him. He just gets a little better at everything that he does every year because he already he's good at everything, but he's not he doesn't have anything about him that jumps out at me, right? Where you're mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh. Like right. you look at a guy like Togley and you're like, the guy's already a great defender. You look at a guy like Grant Levine and you're like, this is a guy that you could dream to hit 40 home runs. Yeah. Right? Like this is a guy that you could see putting a ball over the purple row in course field, right? Like there's, it's easy to dream on certain tools for certain guys. Right. Uh, <laughs> when a dude's just like solid across the board. Yeah. Right with, with yeah. Shunk, like, <laughs> whoa, what are you dreaming on? Like, what's your best case scenario for the image is him not out? making an error at the base. Is it, base or is like it, is it just a like, good at bat and taking a walk? <laughs> yeah. Like, like all of a sudden, you know, the guy, the guy is like, Oh, he's, you know, he's got a, 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 340 on base percentage and he hits 260 and he gives you 18 to 25 home runs a year and you're just like well we sort of stumbled into a pretty good ball player here yeah so i i just think that he's he's always going to be an underrated guy but definitely a guy that you want to keep an eye on because those are the guys that come out of nowhere and get you those are the guys that's that, that come out of nowhere and take jobs the report I had heard about him out of the uh, instructional camp or the instructional league that they had kind of as a pseudo Arizona fall league last year, none of it was televised. They didn't keep box scores. It was hard for even some scouts to get in there. Some CIA w- was <laughs> he, pretty much, you need some top secret clearance to, to get in there at, at Salt River Fields. And the, the reports were really conflicted. It was like, you know, did not look good and really impressed. And you could kind of go either way and, and maybe he is just smack dab in the middle. His, you know, his his path could be similar to Ryan McMahon's. Um, of course, Chunk came uh, at a University of Georgia, whereas McMahon was a, a high schooler from California. But he, Chunk, has started to play a little bit of second base. We saw that at um, in Boise in, in 2019. So he has some of that flexibility, which the Rockies. I mean, that's kind of their 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 thing now. Is they finally caught up to realizing, oh yeah, the Dodgers, what they're doing at the major league level, we should probably start doing it at the minor league level and have our guys just play every position and uh, move them around at flexibility. So we can, you know, uh, maximize the, the at-bats as, as much as possible. And so Shunk is a third baseman, but he can at least move over to second base and isn't forced into, you know, playing first base like most, most of those other guys. And, and if they need a, a position player to pitch, 
he's the perfect candidate because he was uh, George's closer That's for right. his freshman That's and right. sophomore year. So, uh, all right, gotta. <laughs> Uh, yeah, these guys aren't going to be going to help you out a little bit at, at all on pint. They're going to be taking the under on the DraftKings Sportsbook on pint. But, hey, you can find all kinds of fun stuff to vo vote on. Nope, nope, not voting. It's betting. It's completely different. There's actual stakes. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Go to uh, the DMVR DraftKings Sportsbook app. AJ, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I'm taking it all back. Do it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app uh, today. Totally for free, and then you start betting on all kinds of fun stuff, whether it's baseball, basketball, the hockey's. I mean, take the abs. Just keep taking the abs and keep making yourself some money. It's not great odds. You don't want to put high dollar amounts on it, but you're going to continue to make money. Uh, obviously, you can put your baseball fandom to work there. Whichever way it is you lean in, there's always fantastic promos uh, to deal with on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, which basically amount to them throwing free money at you. And right now, of course, you know, the old college basketball tournament going on, a little bit of March Madness, and you can turn $1 into $100 if the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's code DNVR to turn $1 into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Is your bracket going well, AJ? I didn't make one. Didn't make one. You're saving up for the, the Frozen Four. I was, uh, I was honestly, I was just too busy. The tournament started two days. It had been going on for two days when I was like, oh, whoops. Forgot to make one. And those double double ponders, is that what they call them? Double double icers, those back-to-back -back, uh, hockey games? Has there been a good name for the, these back-to-back -back games that they're doing this season? Um, double headers. Yeah, I mean, back-to-backs. Back, back back That's crazy. Who would have ever thought of that one? Who could have ever come up with something like that? You need an education from MSU Denver Online to be smart enough to come up with something True. like that. I'll tell you what, hey, just like me, I got a little bit of my education over at MSU Denver online, taking digital classes before it was cool and somewhat kind of required. Uh, but still, highly, highly recommend. There's all kinds of programs in a myriad of fields, whether it's something you want to go working into, you want to get a degree, maybe you just want an extra skill for your life. You can find it at MSU, uh, MSU Denver edu slash online. You can earn your degree while you're still making money at your job. You don't have to leave doing any of that stuff. They can, they can work into your schedule very, very nicely. Absolutely fantastic teachers and professors there. Check them again at MSU Denver edu slash online. Online. All right, Patrick, I've, I've been asking uh, some of the guys I was interested in and, and some of the comments here, but why don't you, uh, I know there are some of these guys you might want to get AJ's thoughts on. So uh, is there anyone in particular on the prospect list? Well, yeah, maybe nobody in, in particular. I, I do want to ask this question first because, you know, anytime you make up a prospect list, it's it's very subjective. It's, it's an opinionated thing. And um, and I know you, you follow – you know, hockey prospects a lot. And I'm, and I'm wondering if there's, isn't some kind of, you know, similarity between the two, as far as uh, how close a player is to the NHL or in this, in this case, MLB and their, their ranking versus a kid who's 15 years old, you know, playing, you know, somewhere in, in Quebec and you go, man, this kid's head and shoulders above the best and reminds me of this, that, and the other, but just, you know, has maybe three or four years before you ever see him in the NHL. How do you like balance that in, in your opinion, either with hockey or, or with baseball prospects? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's pretty similar the the way that the development tracks are for the two sports, you know, baseball is a little bit longer, but the they're really separated from the NFL and the NBA and that you're drafting kids and projecting them as adults. Uh, and you have years of development to go most of the time before you see the returns at the highest level. Um, you know, it's more common in obviously in hockey for 19, 20, 21 year olds uh, to make major impacts on your team. You just look at the avalanche as an example, like they're five 
best five of their best players are like 23 and younger. It's like, okay. Um, but I think, I think when you're making like an organization, like a ranking, like a prospect ranking, you do take it into consideration. You know, you take in a guy's potential, you know, you look at, well, I can, I can dream on, on a guy. I can dream on Brenton Doyle all I want. You know, I love the tools you love, you love what you've seen so far, but given the relative level of competition and given the lack of a pro track, uh, uh, track record so far, like you just, you stop yourself from getting too crazy. You say, okay, well, I, you got to see this at a higher level. And then you see like, okay, well, Colton, Colton Welker, all he's done is just hit the crap out of the ball at every level that he's ever played. And he's played, you know, he's, he's, he's mastered multiple levels of pro baseball before or, uh, up to this point. So it's easy. So I, I would say is even if you were the, the biggest Doyle fan in the world, right? Like you, you have to keep that in mind, right? Like what a guy has actually accomplished at certain levels um, certainly changes how you feel about him. Uh, whereas if you're just dreaming on tools, there's only so far that you can go. You know, if you look at a guy like Zach Veen, Zach Veen hadn't done anything in pro ball, but he's number one because he's got that kind of ceiling and he comes from he comes from a, a proven fertile ground of of success. You know, we you know, Drew, I know you were talking earlier about high school catchers. It's kind of this Grant Levine is kind of the same thing as a high schooler out of New Hampshire. You know, they don't play year round there. They play they play shorter seasons because of the weather. And so you have there's a much smaller track record of New Hampshire high school guys getting drafted and having big time success um, versus guys coming out of Florida. So, you know, you you look at a guy like a uh, guy like Brenton Doyle and you lots of reasons to be excited, right? Especially, yeah. especially on the heels of Sam Hilliard's recent success, yeah. where you're like, okay, well, you're looking for the next guy that's got a lot of tools that maybe got underrated because of where they played, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, with with Zach Veen, he hasn't done anything in pro ball either, but we're still talking about the guy. Like, hey, we think this guy could be an all star. Yeah, there's you, you look at that, and it's it's easy to see it. Yeah, it, it seems like. Cause I'm with you. Like I, I feel much safer. I, and, and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier with the, the high school catchers or like you're talking about players from warm States or whatever, what that's all about is like how comfortable we feel in projecting these people forward. Cause we're taking yeah. kind of shots in the dark and educated guesses about where certain things, come yeah, from you're... And which things depend on what you can I... feel confident in. The only thing that makes you overcome that where you get the confidence from seeing the guys like Colton Welker or whatever yeah. is your tools have to be almost off the charts where Zach Veen is, right? That's where you're just like, well, okay, he still does need to prove it some. Yeah, but, but it, it's it a special helps, exception. Like it helps that Cody Bellinger is great in, in the MLB and you watch Zach Veen and you're like, boy, there's a lot of similarities there. It's really easy to project a guy when you look at a guy and you could just see the success already happening in MLB. And you're like, okay, well, maybe he doesn't end up quite that good. But even if you get 85% of Cody Bellinger, you have a really good player on your hands. Right. So based on, on what you said, two guys that are kind of kind of show this in, in a sense, and, and maybe it's just specifically these two guys where we get your opinion on. Um, but I, I, I also want to give thanks to uh, a friend of mine, Nathaniel Sunshine, who in the process, in the course of, you know, creating this list, he did a lot of uh, behind the scenes work and, uh, and taking a lot of notes and, and some really great uh, entry and uh, finding some fantastic resources. So shout out to my buddy, Nathaniel Sunshine, uh, check him out on, on Twitter, doing big things down there at the School of Mines. But two guys that are right next to each other that kind of really show that example of they're closer to the show and have has actually done something. And then a guy who has yet to even play ball in America. So you've got the number 11 pros, uh, number 11 prospect, Ella Harris Montero, third baseman that maybe is, ends up being a first baseman, uh, the second biggest piece in the Arenado deal. And then 17-year-old Adael Amador. With those two guys, 
maybe again, you have an affinity uh, for one over the other, but types of players like that, one that has a higher, maybe a higher upside like Amador, that's again, has a long way to go. Um, or the older guy, four years older, um, already has an MVP caliber season, not caliber. It, he was the MVP in 2018 in the Midwest League, uh, but has certain flaws, you know, in, in his swing and in his body. Do you like the closer guy in Montero or do you want to dream on Amador? I think in that case, I'm probably dreaming um, because you're already starting to poke real holes in Montero's game at this point. You're starting to find reasonable areas uh, in his game that might keep him from being a productive big leaguer. Uh, whereas the guy that, you know, the, 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 the 18 year old is, you haven't seen him in pro ball yet. It's easy to dream on him. Um, which guy is more valuable and knowing what you have, it's Montero. But if you don't think that you're going to get an impact player at the big league level, then he's more of an organizational filler. And maybe you're already starting to have a foot in the bucket on the guy. You know, you're already one, one foot is out the door already on a guy like that. That makes me nervous. Um, you know, that's, that's probably going a little too far with how you feel about Montero, but I, I, I would say, I mean, you make up, you look at the top 30 list every year and then fast forward five years, how many of those guys even play in the big leagues? There's just like, just not many of those guys end up made like your best chances starters turning into relievers and stuff, right? Like those guys, they can't master their stuff. And so they end up becoming, okay, well, I I'm really good at these two things. So we're just going to, I'm going to become a specialist in this one niche and, you know, the, it's harder to do that. I think as a, as an everyday player, but you look at, you look at those lists and so many of these guys, like, you know, for the junkies, they, they turn into like, Oh, remember when this guy was the bees knees. Remember when this guy was all the, all the, the next great hotness or a guy that you had totally sold yourself on. This guy's going to put all these tools together and it's going to work and it's going to blah, 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 blah. Like the Roselle uh, Herrera stands, is that? Yeah, is that I mean, I, mm, Rosie, I, I would Chris just, Nelson. Oh, Chris, Chris Nelson. Also yeah. ninth overall selection in the first yeah. round. Kyle Parker yeah. was one. A lot of tools and a lot of promise. Yeah, I just, um, which guy do I prefer? I would prefer Amador in that case. I would prefer the guy that's further away. Yeah, we hope to, hope to see him this year. You know, there are four affiliates uh, for every major league team, but there are still not enough. A, a, there's there's still going to be like a complex league, so um, there's a chance while you might not see uh, Amador at, at Low A Fresno, um, he may still be uh, training at Salt River Fields in, in one of those kind of complex leagues. And hopefully, we get statistics this year from that because I think that would be very valuable for everybody. Just it'd be nice to have you know. Information. A box on, score. Yeah, on, information. <laughs> about some of these guys. Sometimes. I used to, I remember digging through the DSL box scores with mm. Ryan Altapia and Pedro Gonzalez back in the day. And that kind of just like, it was like, now, and then and last year, nothing. Just nothing. Hey, you mentioned finding flaws in some of these guys' bodies. A little bit rude. But uh, one of the ways I take care of the flaws in my body, just get manscaped. Takes care of it. Then I'm then it's flawless. I don't I don't I don't mean to I don't, don't mean to break anyone's you know image of what I might have, especially those of you that don't watch the YouTubes. You're missing out. If you only listen to the podcast, by the way, you can't challenge that assertion in any way. You don't get to say anything if you're just podcast listeners. So subscribe to the YouTube or you don't get to comment one way or the other. But I do know that well, maybe I don't actually be flawless. I feel flawless when I get myself. Nice and manscaped at manscaped.com. You can also use code DNVR20 to get 20% off plus free shipping. Whether you need a new lawnmower to get all nice and tightened up, you need some spritzer, some deodorant, comfortable pair of boxers you ever worn in your life, whatever it is, go to manscaped.com. Treat yourself uh, or treat your significant other. Treat a buddy. It might seem strange, but do it. Say, look, buddy, I've, I've been hearing some stuff. The ladies, I've been hearing over the, over here in the ladies, they say you need to get manscaped. I got you a lawnmower 3.0. I got 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. No well, reason you can't shade. buy your buddy. 
<laughs> Wouldn't that be your buddy just shows up? It could just be a smell situation too. Like you could be and across you just the room. Give him the spritzer. And go, <laughs> oh, that's spritz yourself, bro. <laughs> Doesn't even say anything. Just just walks up and just does it, and it's like we're good. We're good, everybody. I don't know. <laughs> that's another use for it, actually. <laughs> so, uh, still got a, a few minutes here. What else did you? What, what else is on the table? There's a lot of other guys. I mean, there, there's guys we could get into. Uh, we talked about the pint dream being dead, almost certainly. I still think there's a chance for him to work out as a reliever. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that's my only hope at this point is that they just give up on this and they turn him into just a flamethrower. Here, do what you do. You were so protective of your arm in high school. It hasn't worked out in in pro ball. This is, you you can either have a career or not. Which one? You know what he he needs the uh, probably the same thing that David Dahl needs is just a change of scenery. Like he just needs to be somewhere right. else to to kind of go and you know kind of be his own man or uh, be a new man again. I should say um, yeah. because he he played in Asheville for three straight years. That's not a place that you want to keep showing back up. Like you want to go to one of these affiliates. Be fantastic, Lee, and they go. Oh man, remember that guy two years ago? Not oh, that guy from two years ago is still here. So I, I think he just kind of needs to go uh, elsewhere. I think it would just be good for him, and um, and and he might have you know a second chance of, with another organization. And I, I hope that's the case. We saw it with Tyler Matzik last year. You know, was was fantastic with Atlanta, and that could be kind of the the remedy for Pine. Very excited yeah, the- for him to go to the Braves and succeed without any issues. So Tyler Matzik actually made it to the majors and had two good seasons for the Colorado Rockies at, at the yeah. major level too. I will say that. So, you know, I, I've seen that comparison made before too. It's like, Hey, if Riley Pine's going to do that first, I'll take that too. <laughs> I will take the the quality two years the, at, at the big league level uh, equivalent to what the Rockies got out of Matzik. Uh, Cause yeah, I just, not that you were doing that, Patrick. I just know some like sure. people out there sometimes when they retell that story, especially now that he's catching back on with the Braves, like, oh, this guy totally fr- flamed out with the Rockies. And I was like, no, he actually didn't. He got to the big leagues, found success at the big leagues, and then it all fell apart. Uh, much closer to a like a Daniel Bard story with the Red Sox. And oddly enough, nobody blames the Red Sox for that. Weird. Anyway. Why would you blame the Red Sox when you can blame somebody else? The Red Sox <laughs> are perfect. They do nothing wrong. <laughs> They've never done anything wrong. Uh, do you have a sleeper in this farm system, AJ? Is there a guy that maybe isn't in the top 10 or 15 that you think has a chance to be sometime soon, or you just think people are? Even if the guy only becomes like Josh Fuentes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, like, no, 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 I mean, become a star. But you're not yeah, the 25th they're... prospect, and then you're like, you know, you become, you know, a perennial all-star, or even even have one all-star appearance. But you're like, hey, no, this guy is – starting third baseman or what have you for a couple opening days in a row provided some really good memories and you go, yeah, dude, that, that dude's a big leaguer. I mean, you got to feel like Jamison Hanna has got some kind of future, right? Yeah. I like that pick. He, like, yeah, he's very intriguing. We see, we see guys like him in the big leagues. Like there's not lots of them, but there are a couple in MLB Every single year. Yeah. And those, in the and, 90s, every team had two of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, they just they just keep hanging around, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, if, you can, if you can run that fast. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was really you know, glad to see him had, do, do well at the beginning of spring training. That was really nice. I think, I think he would be my sleeper guy to just be a dude that just sort of hangs around for a couple of years. And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah. But I don't, one guy I, don't, that's, I don't think he'll be a regular or anything. Uh, Johnny Herrera written all over him. Okay. I'd be good with that. I have, yeah. the, at, at his apex, he's Willie Tavares. Ooh. Like, now I'm getting excited. <laughs> like, best case scenario. That's that's how it goes that well. Hitting 260, so, but swiping 50 bags. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Shelby Lackey is a player that uh, was outside the top 33 that I think – Okay, maybe he uh, ends up doing some things. Uh, I don't think he, he gets enough credit. Um, I remember being down in, in spring training at the beginning of 2019. It was him and two other guys, and I'm drawing a blank as to uh, who it was that I talked to just ever so briefly, and he was just kind of waiting in the wings and 
he was looking like, whoa, a guy from Denver is talking to one of my buddies. Like, oh, that's cool. And yet he's the much bigger, you know, prospect now outside the top 33, but what was a guy that I said, oh, hmm, interesting. He was right there. And I kind of didn't, didn't recognize him at the time. Whereas now I, I would miss that opportunity. So uh, I hope, I hope he does well and maybe can give a little bit more depth to uh, the Rockies starting pitching uh, right now in, in, in the mid level of the minors. Yeah, that's a deep cut. I like that. I would also Sam Weatherly. Um, yeah, just a guy with pure stuff, dude. That that you've got to be excited about, you know. And it's different. It's different when you uh, use use a pick in the third round on a guy uh, that has electric stuff and not any control versus the fourth <laughs> overall selection. It's you're a lot more comfortable being like. Hey, let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just kind of hoping for the best. So I'm. Yeah, touching 98 from the left side with a reported wipeout slider that also the, he just doesn't know where it's going to go. Like, you were yeah. Saying. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, uh, if, if they could, if they could teach him how to pitch, man. Um, yeah. You've got to be excited about a guy with that kind of stuff that lasted as long as he did. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited for the season in general. Just those memories, those guys getting walk-offs, guys that we've never heard of and we may never hear of again. But, hey, in May of 2021, when minor league baseball is back and, you know, you got all these these prospects in, in Spokane – Okay, all right. There's a there's a Rockies affiliate in Washington. Whatever. Let's go. This guy hit a walk off. I'm pumped about him, and I might never think about him ever again. But yet, that's what makes baseball so beautiful. And I'm I'm looking forward to learning that guy's name, whoever he is. Right. And then on the flip side, there are those guys that you never thought about, and then you're a week from the season. You're like, is Lucas Gilbreth going to make this team? <laughs> like, yeah, when they added him to the 40-man <laughs> roster and everybody was like, who is that exactly? Yeah. yeah. Seeker weapon. Yeah, that was your that was your first shot across the bow. Throwing 96, and you're just like, well, okay. <laughs> I guess this, is the, this is the year to do it. Go full YOLO with those guys and just be like, all right, Justin Lawrence, let's see what you got. A hundred percent. I think we'll see those guys this year as well. Both those yeah. guys for sure. Gilbreth, he's right so have them, Look, they're going to, it's going to take an hour, but have them both pitch in the sixth inning. It'll be a wild time. <laughs> oh man. Good stuff. All right. So, yeah, as, as we have I've talked about a lot, you know, the Rockies farm system not rated highly, uh, though. Now, as, as much as any time ever, is a, it's a strange time to be trying to evaluate prospects for all the teams, especially for the Rockies who don't tell evaluators anything. And, uh, you know, and then one day a guy shows up to camp throwing 96 and no one knew he could do that. And so he was like, well. Yep. All right, we're going to find out. Like Patrick said, the, the best news about all of this is that very, very soon we get to stop talking just in theory about <laughs> all of these players. We get to talk about actual yeah. baseball games that that's they're playing point. and evaluate them, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll have to have you back on. Uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, you know, coming up to the draft, and I'm sure you'll be a part of our draft coverage and stuff, but I know you've always got your eye on these uh, – these prospects and stuff. So appreciate it, man. Yeah. It's a, it's always fun to come and talk. I, I was sorry. I missed out on the, uh, the draft the other day. Cause I had too much going on. The superstars draft. Yeah. If we could do five people, the only problem is Twitter won't let us vote. Cause we always have to have the people vote on who drafted the best team. And if we have five people on, well, we could just have the tacit agreement that mine was the best. And then just take everybody <laughs> take me off of the vote to give you guys a chance. I, there's still a very good chance that if you, uh, although we've already selected 20 players, the you next group of guys, five, whoever yeah. you pick, AJ, <laughs> honestly could still win because win. there's that much depth, at, I think, at the front. Again, no one's better than Trout, Bats. Like we, we know what, what those guys are going to do. But yeah. still, there are four other guys on, on those squads as well that um, could be surpassed. So Eloy Jimenez, he's he's gone for five, six months now. Nobody yeah. picked them, Good thing you but didn't that's an take example <laughs> of how just how easily that could get wiped away. Exactly. So yeah. you should go ahead. You have until April 1st to make your a team of renegades of, of five players. All right. I'll, uh, I'll give it a look. I'll let you know. 
And then the the quick pitch for the anyone, and everyone's got to be an Avs fan at this point, but on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited should everyone be about where the Avs are at right now and how this season is going? 10, honestly. Um, you know, it's no, it's no homer talk that they are legitimately a top five team in the NHL. Um, and they're playing outstanding hockey right now. Like now is a now is a misleadingly good time to get in get on the bandwagon because you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, these guys are unstoppable and their play will dip at some point. It will <laughs> not never be this going good. to lose. <laughs> yeah. It will not be this good forever. But whew, yeah. Uh it is a great time to come hang out with us over on the uh, the app side of things. Uh but really just ball arena in general, man. I mean the Nuggets Right. The Nuggets finally did a thing. The big difference between the Nuggets and the Avs is that the Avs have nobody to fear in their route to the Stanley Cup. They are legitimately right there with them. Um, whereas if you're the Nuggets, you're still sitting there having nightmares about LeBron James. Um, the Avalanche the Avalanche don't have a LeBron James in their way. Uh, Nathan McKinnon is LeBron. So... The abs, the Av, it's a great time to get on uh, the abs, the abs bandwagon. Even if you just catch a game here and there, if you if you don't if you don't want to sit through the regular season, you just want to show up for the postseason. Also acceptable, no judgment. The bar will be open. Uh, hockey fans are always wanting more love for their sport, so come come and join the wild ride because they're winning a Stanley Cup this year. Let's go. We're not beating that. You got to sign off there. If you don't want to miss any moment of that run to the Stanley Cup, follow all the DNVR abs guys, AJ Hafley, Rudo, Evan Rao. Follow them all there on all the social media stuff. Make sure you're subscribing to the DNVR.com and all the podcasts and all that good stuff. Uh, also follow myself and Patrick, I guess, if you feel like it, at Patrick B. Lyons, at Drew Creaseman, at DNVR underscore Rockies. Uh, I mentioned the subscribing, all the other good stuff. Just Keep being awesome. Keep being a part of the family, man. And, and if you haven't been so before, now's the best time to do it. Like we're talking about Rocky season just about to start. So you're going to want to get all the prospect stuff, bunch of stuff in the hopper right now that we're writing. Plus the nuggets and abs are about to go on insane runs. You don't want to miss any of that right now is the absolute best time to subscribe to the DNVR.com. So do it, become a member of the family, get the free holistic stick, the free shirt, all the discounts we throw you and all that coverage of these teams. Those ones are going to be a little more exciting, but we know you love your Rockies despite and in spite of yourselves and of ourselves. So thank you all for continuing to be absolutely awesome out there. We promise to continue to be absolutely Patrick Lyons, Drew Creaseman, and AJ Hayfley in here. And until next time, we will see you. Ballpark.